sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Oh, tease what you wanted? Well, luckily for you, Fulbright never had me sign any NDA like Pickering, so please prepare yourself for the full and complete exposure of my Fulbright stipend, how much it costs to live in Taiwan, and... I don't know, more? <clears throat> I want to be clear. Even though someone did the breakdown and it came out to the fact that we were working about 5 USD per hour, I still had enough money to do reckless things like drive an hour away just to get a bubble tea pizza. It was delicious, thanks for asking. I'm currently editing the video that you're watching and I realized that I never introduced myself. <laughs> so the sun is retired, we're not doing this again. My name is Brittany Edwards and this channel is a box of chocolates. Let's get in to it. I'm going to talk about how much my rent was, my utilities, food, all, it, it's all going to be here. And my lovely assistant is going to help us out with all the numbers. Hi, nice to meet you. So you can put your pen and pencil away. You won't need to be carrying any ones anywhere around here. The conversion rate around the time when I went was about 30 Taiwan dollars to one US dollar. So keep that in mind for this whole video. Whenever I'm talking about dollars, I'm talking about Taiwan dollars and not US dollars. So the total stipend is $40,000 per month. Rent is approximately $18,000. Now remember that is divided by three people. Our house, we lived in a five floor house lovingly referred to as the Playboy Mansion. And that is not because any unscrupulous activities were happening there, I promise. Well, I can't say that. But it was because when we walked into the house, there was this Playboy bunny pillow just sitting on the couch. And so it just became the Playboy Mansion because Playboy has a very different reputation in Taiwan than it does in America. My roommate's mattress was a Playboy mattress. Like, what? It probably also didn't help that they gave me this key that makes me feel like I'm in a Kingdom Hearts live action. So there were three of us living in this five floor house. I had my own room and bathroom and my two roommates lived on the floor above me and they had their own rooms and shared a bathroom. Bottom floor was the kitchen, fourth floor was some kind of storage. And then the fifth floor was a half a floor and that opened up to a rooftop. And it, that was just like amazing because our house was one of the tallest houses in the area. So you could see the sunset, you can stand out and look out there. Remember these utilities, this electricity and water is billed once every two months. So these numbers that I'm giving you are two months. If you are reckless, electricity will cost you nearly $7,000. Oh my gosh, for the love that is all and good and holy, do not use your air conditioning. Buy a fan like I did, which was one time cost of probably like $300. I don't think it was that expensive. Maybe it was a thousand, but that doesn't sound very familiar. I think it was about $300 because using AC will just about triple your bill. And the only reason ours was double was because I wasn't using AC, because I knew better than that. The only thing that I didn't know better not to do was not communicate that explicitly with my roommates beforehand, because when that first bill came and I was like, I'm not paying this because I didn't use AC, they were like, well, you never said anything. So, and clearly they don't want to pay for it because it's really expensive. So while we're here, just a little res life kicking in, please clearly communicate your intentions with your roommate in terms of what you plan to do, Okay, yeah, we can bring that down to 3,000 if you don't use AC or heat, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi for the whole house will cost 900. So depending on how many people live there, you will divide it by that, and that's once a month from March until June, paying the full 900 because your roommates decided to change their mind. I also would recommend you to have um, precautions set up. So for example, like me, I got stuck paying $900 a month for Wi-Fi because my roommates both decided halfway through the year that they just don't want to pay for this anymore. So if you like, you know, set up those expectations at the beginning, like, hey, if we're all agreeing to do this, we are going to agree to do this until the end or something like that because you don't want to get caught up in an unfortunate situation paying money that you didn't expect to pay because people have changed their minds. And I don't think, you know, changing your mind is fine, but just communicating that in the beginning will be so much nicer because you're impacting other people's lives, right? So just please be mindful, thoughtful of others and the decisions that you make and how that might be impacting others. Water is about 450 per month. We also have a house with a gas tank. So that gas tank is gonna be 260 divided by three people. Again, but that is once every three months. Oh, right. Also, there are no microwaves, ovens. Like those aren't casual things to have in your house. Well, I don't know if the other girls had microwaves, but we definitely didn't have a microwave. We had a rice steamer. Oh yeah, we also had a convection oven, but we were like the only ones that had a little convection oven. Because it was a house, we actually had a separate gas tank. We had to get that exchanged and filled. So if you live in an apartment, you probably won't have to deal with the gas situation thing. But the gas ran out because we cooked a good deal. We didn't really like have to because 
food in Taiwan is so cheap. It's a, like a huge eating out culture there. The local food is about $60 a meal. You probably, you know, it'll fluctuate. Generally speaking, most things are about $60. If you're getting more Western style food, that's gonna cost you a little bit more. Between 190 and 300, usually closer to 300. Groceries, um, groceries are pretty cheap. Huh? Groceries are very affordable. They're very cheap. I remember seeing, I mean, you remember seeing um, $18 for a whole head of lettuce. It's so hard for me to remember the price of groceries just because I bought them so infrequently. It's almost to the point where it's more expensive to cook than it is to eat out. Do with that information what you will. Most of the times if I was buying groceries, I'd just buy fruit and stuff. To estimate our food costs, let's assume that we are buying local food for every meal the entire week. Let's say Monday through Friday, you are only buying two meals a week instead of three because you'll be having school lunch. That brings us up to 600. I actually forgot about that. I'm acting like school lunch was free and it definitely wasn't free. I think we had to pay $30 per day for school lunch, which is a pretty good deal. You know, that's half price of the regular, but I, honestly, it got to a point where I entered like food depression for just not being really excited about what I was eating and not super enjoying what I was eating. I know I'm a huge foodie, like to the point where I literally go into food depression. Halfway through the year, I just decided I can't do this anymore. It's like really cutting into my happiness. So I just started bringing my own lunch. For the weekend, you'll be paying for all three meals, Sunday and Saturday. So that's six times two times 60, which is 360. So that comes out to $960. And let's be honest, we're gonna treat ourselves every once in a while to some Western food. So let's just throw a thousand in there. That brings us up to 1,960. Honestly, we could just run that up to 2,000. So you can expect to pay around 2,000 a month for food. However, we forgot a critical calculation, which is bubble tea. I have not one, but two reusable bubble tea straws that accompany me everywhere I go, even in my life in America. Bubble tea is about $50 a drink, but that can add up, you know, if you're getting it daily or three times a week. That's why we can safely run it to 2,000. And honestly, it might even tip over. Approximately $2,000 per month with $1,000 for gas. The car, they just gave us some like arbitrary price to pay for it just because we needed to have some type of responsibility and not just, you know, get a free car. So it's not the actual cost of buying a car in Taiwan or renting a car in Taiwan. And it's very, like I cannot explain to you how rare it is to have a car to go to school in Taiwan. Our county only existed because of these donors. They were willing to fork over the extra money for it because those ETAs also needed to go to their alma mater. That certain school happened to be far away from where we were living and it also was dangerous to go there because the only way to get there is on this highway and there are a lot of trucks on the highway and scooting on the highway just is not, it's not acceptable. <laughs> but most of the times you're just gonna have a scooter. Buy a scooter that's gonna set you back between 23,000 and $50,000. I have seen scooters selling for 23,000. I don't think that that's common. I think that was like, you know, a really desperate person and a really great steal if I may say so myself. I don't know how much gas for a scooter is. I'm gonna link below the practice site for the scooter test if you want to take a gander at it, if you're interested in taking the scooter test, because word on the street is it's like really hard to pass. Maybe not so much the written part, but I specifically know people that had to take the test three times before they passed it. So... You're also gonna want to tack on a US $30 if you decide to get your international driving permit. I do recommend it even if you don't necessarily have any full intention on driving. It's only $30. I got mine just because and I ended up being in a situation with a car. So that was just amazing. And the other person lived in California and so their California license didn't need an international something to drive internationally. Uber is going to be more expensive than a taxi, but taxis are $85 and then increase in increments of five depending on your time and distance. That's usually in Taipei. But if you're in Tanghua, they're probably just going to dip into their back pocket and pull out a number. So you're not going to be able to get an Uber everywhere. You're only really going to be able to Uber in Taipei and maybe Kaohsiung. Another one of my main modes of transportation was a bike. And I actually just went up to my school and I was like, hey, so y'all got an extra bike you don't need or something. And they actually came up with one. So I got a free bike from my school. That was kind of my main mode of transportation. That didn't cost me anything except at the end of the year. I don't know how, but somehow the seat got like a tear in it. And I just felt so embarrassed to borrow something from someone and then to return it in like really bad condition. So I bought another seat at some random bike shop that I found. I don't remember how much it was, probably like 300, nah, I feel like it should have been more than 300, but I don't remember it. Maybe it was 600. That sounds about right. That was the end of that. $11,903. Let's just run that up to 12,000. $12,000 a month for your basic life necessity expenses. Right, that whole part about me dancing for money, okay. That didn't actually happen, but that's because 
it's like illegal to have an extra job while you're there. You're in violation of your visa. So you can't actually acquire any extra bubble tea money while you're there. However, there is this one teeny tiny exception. And I think that that only really works if you're a researcher or a professor doing Fulbright. Um, I don't really know how much to extend to that grace. I did end up getting like another job towards the end of my grant. The last month or two months, I started tutoring three junior high students. And at the end of it, their mom just took me and a friend out to get hot pot and that was it. That was like my thank you compensation. And then also building relationships, which is so much more meaningful than money. Like the way that you're building this relationship with me by subscribing to my channel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, phone is probably a thousand dollars. Honestly, the records here, they're just not clear enough for me. So let's just round that in. Laundry is free, but if you decide to live in luxury, it will be $60 to dry. So if you're not doing laundry very frequently, then that's like $60 once a month for drying. If you don't have a washer, it's probably $30 to wash and $60 to dry. Oh gosh, I didn't even mention like the cost of products and stuff like that. I mean, I feel like soap was $9.60. So if you're going to get any kind of like US or foreign brands, they're going to be a lot more expensive. If you are really sensitive to the products, then I would recommend that you bring as much of those as you can and sacrifice clothes. If you want a gym membership, I really don't know how much that is. I don't gym. I was like a full athlete in my youth, like tri season. However, exercising is not one of my hobbies. <laughs> the dance classes were also in the hospital that was close by, but also I think that maybe the gym would be there too. I don't know, but if you're in more major cities, they're definitely gonna have like a real life gym because I remember some people talking about that. I really do nighttime activities because if you know me, you're part of the tribe. You've been here for a while. You know that I'm a grandma. I don't really do nighttime. So all that drinking, clubbing. Oh shoot, I forgot to mention that. The cover cost, the cover fee, the whatever, the cover charge for going to clubs is so expensive. Like it's just crazy to me. First of all, I don't even go out. So I don't know what's regular, but it's like a thousand dollars just for the entry. People are out here paying this. Like this is crazy. And that's not even to mention drinks. Obviously drinks are going to be like, uh i would say around 190 300 if you're in a western style place if you are a, a partier or a nighttime person you're definitely going to be racking it up especially if you live in the cities because the cities are just like so much more tempting than where i lived or the rural parts because you, we don't have places to go at nighttime <laughs> like we have matter of fact not even the grocery store anyways moral of the story is if you live in a city, you're probably gonna be spending a lot more just because there's a lot more temptation around you. Karaoke, that's a very popular thing to do. Like KTV is what it's actually called. That's what cool kids call it. So KTV is, you know, the thing to do with your friends or the thing to do like full stop. And the other major nightlife thing is going to night markets and that's their nightlife. That's that's what they do. A couple of times we did group weekend trips and there that's pretty affordable. Like the travel in Taiwan is amazing, but getting a hostel, for example, is ridiculous ridiculously cheap and if you want to be a little bit more luxurious and hostels aren't your thing for christmas my best friend she was teaching in japan and she came to visit me and we went to this motel okay motels in taiwan have a completely different reputation than they do in america motels are luxurious okay and the only bad reputation that they have is because it's considered like a sex hotel there's five of you sharing one room they're gonna be like whoa <laughs> you know so that's one thing to keep in mind about the motel but like if you don't really care and you're just trying to live your best life please continue to live your best life because we had a private elevator, like a whole living room. We had a, a four person jacuzzi and like a shower room with jets coming out the wall. And then the jacuzzi thing had like water coming down from the top. It was so cool. Like it was amazing. And then you also have a free buffet the next morning. And that place was like for a regular schmegular hotel in America, you could get that luxurious hotel in Taiwan. Like also the hostels there though are really nice and aesthetically pleasing. And then there's also homestays that you can do. At the end of the day, you're going to have a lot of money left over to travel as long as you're not eating too much Western food or Ubering from place to place. Okay, what did I do at the end? Well, at the end of everything, it was really expensive to wire your money from a Taiwan account to a US account. But I did and a lot of other people did was convert it into cash and just casually carry that across the border. Because you'll get a better rate when you convert at a local bank versus like at the airport in Taiwan versus at the airport in America versus at a bank in America. It just made more sense to get the most bang for your buck for me at that time to transfer all of my money into US dollars and put that in my backpack and just like, you know, casually walk through the airport, like <laughs> nothing to see here. Just a regular girl with a regular backpack and not 4,000 US dollars on me. Well, that's all I have for the numbers. I think that's everything. 
Um, but I'll just give you guys a little ciao. <laughs>